Alexa, turn it down. Ooh, she turned it way down. Alexa, turn it down. Hello? Okay. Um, oh, I'm gonna get... Hello? Alexa, pause. I don't want my video to get deleted because there's some music in the background that's not mine. Um, yeah, I see kind of real close to my face today because I wanted to sit by the table. <laughs> it's fine. Guess who's 99 today? Miss Betty White. She should have been president. She's still living. Hi, Anne. Um, yeah, so... I mean, I kind of have a lot to talk about, but I feel like I'm going to be like a squirrel. Like a little here and a little there. So just bear with me. It has been... Well, let's see. Last week I did the wig haul. And now I have a stack of wigs that I want to get rid of. <laughs> it's it's fine. I just can't love all of them, right? Like, I can't love them. I mean, I love them. But I just don't know that I love them on me as much. Oh, two of them are new. Well, actually, all three of them are new. Three that I want to get rid of. Hi, Wendy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might say that for a different day. Um, so, my husband can hear right through the bedroom vent. He's not in the bedroom right now, but I've had my music on really loud. So now he knows that I'm live, but he still doesn't want to be in the group. And he doesn't want to be on video. So, that's neither here nor there. So... Back up before last week, he had appointments scheduled with my shaman, my spiritual advisor, Miss Alita. And let me get my notes because I took notes. I took notes on a lot of things that have been happening in my life. And I feel like it's because it's a lot and my brain just cannot absorb all the crap. Right? I think we're just going to say that. We're going to say that because I'm only 45. I'm not losing my mind. Not... Exactly. Um, so the first healing that he had was pretty much all about his family. Hi, Auntie Anne. Um, basically all the guilt from his father's death that he carries around with him that I didn't find out about until years into our relationship. I had no idea that he had this guilt thinking that if he would have gone home because he was in America, he had ran away when he was, I don't know, 14 something like that, um, that if he would have gone home when his father asked him to, that his father wouldn't have died. From what I understand, because it's not all my memories, obviously, um, so everything I know is secondhand, but from what I understand, his, um, his father was sending letters wanting him to come back home, um, and I don't know exactly the reasons why he ran away. What I gather is that <clears throat> there were four boys. The two oldest were in school. School is not something in Mexico that is of the same priority that it is here. And the reason for that is because it's expensive and most families can't afford it. It's not like they have public school systems like we do here. So the two older boys were in school. Miguel's youngest brother was too young to work, so Miguel was pulled out of school to work with his dad. This is what I understand. I don't even know if this is correct, but um, he wanted better for his family, so he ran away, and he came here, <clears throat> California. And they sent his brother, who actually lives here in Appleton, um, with him. Well, not with him, but after him. They knew where he was, and they would send letters, apparently, because they knew where they were staying in California, and they would send letters, and his, his dad wanted him to go home. And all he wanted was to send money and, and let his family have a better life. Well, his dad worked construction, and his dad got hit in the head with a two-by-four. Hi, Denise. Hi, Pam. Hi, Sammy Joe. So his dad got hit in the head with a two-by-four. Um, I don't think they fully understood what happened to him after the event, Miguel doesn't know some of the information that I know, actually, uh, which I kind of blurted out, which was awkward. And I think I said you that, that before, like that he was, um, he had lost feeling like from below the waist. 
So his father eventually died, and Miguel carried around all of this guilt that if he just would have been there, if he just would have gone home, if he, if he, if he. So it was like survivor's guilt, basically. Amplified because he was so young and he ran away from home. So that was his first session. Um, when he went to his second session, he said he felt better. He still had a little bit of the guilt, um, but it most the most of part of it was gone. He said that he is an introvert, that he's very quiet, he prefers to be home, and um, none of that is wrong, except for the introvert part, because when you get Miguel around other people, Miguel is very social. So, so social. He used to be a bartender, and I'm like thinking, I kind of feel like he's doing to himself what I did to myself, because, hi Dan, I used to say I was an introvert. I used to say I was an introvert all the damn time. Isn't that funny? Oh, God, that's so funny to me. I used to say it all the time, and all my friends would be like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I don't really like talk to people or whatever, and here I am. Anyways, so I feel like he's kind of lying to himself on that avenue because he's probably a good combination of both, maybe. He's introverted, yes. He stays home. He doesn't hang out in bars, thank fuck, because that would have been terrible. Um, did that, <laughs> did that with my ex. Um, and so he is home a lot and he doesn't talk much, which is part of our problem still. Um, but that he also worries all the time, which is something I didn't know. And here's my piece of frustration with all of this. I'm still frustrated about it. I'm trying to accept it as it's not my, it's not my reality, but at the same time, it still pisses me off. I mean, I just have to be honest about it. He can say all of these things. Hi, Heidi. He can say all these things to someone else, but he can't say them to his wife, and that's frustrating. That's beyond frustrating. Let's just be real. So I get that it's it makes sense to have a third party where, you know, it's kind of like going to counseling. Like, if you have a third party, an unbiased party that can, like, give you feedback and etc. but at the same time, you should be able to speak to your partner, your spouse, your significant other, whatever you want to whatever name you want to put on that, about these issues that you're dealing with. So he said that he worries all the time. He feels that he's not successful um, in life, that he wants to own something because that's how he's rating success in life. He compared his self, his life, to that of his brother's. And while I will not speak about his brother's life because that is not my life, all I all I told him was, because we had to have, we had to talk about all this. I talked to him about all this. All I told him was that if that's what he's comparing himself to, that I want no part of that. His brother's house is almost paid off and they were able to buy another property this past year. And for some reason, Miguel equates success with things like he wants to have a, a paid off house. He wants to own vehicles. Like he will not the very first vehicle he ever bought, he put on a loan, and he has never done it since. He wants to own things outright. And that's fine. There's a lot of people like that in the world. I don't have a problem with that. But you, his brother's life is not this picture-perfect thing that he's told himself that it is. So, And I, I know that because I speak to his sister-in-law, my sister-in-law. She's more like a sister these days. We talk a lot. Anyways, um... He bought a house for his mom in Mexico, and that is his house, but he wants to own one here. Um, he's getting, he said he's getting older and it's his dream to own, which I understand that. We're, neither one of us are getting any younger, but the reality is that owning this home, or any home for that matter, is going to push us well into an advanced age unless we hit the lottery. Let's just be honest. We just bought this house a year and a half ago for a lot of money. Oh, and we're refinancing on Tuesday because the interest rates were so low. Like, oh my God, you had to, right? Um, he said that he wants to give more to his children. Oh, sorry. Somebody would like me to buy something. Um, she said that he got extremely emotional when he talked about the kids. And he said that he recognizes that the boys are just like him because they don't communicate. 
That'd be correct as well. Any of you that know me and my family, you know my, my boys don't talk. Gabe especially does not talk to anybody. Michael is more social. Michael will come, like, when we have parties and stuff. Michael hangs out with the adults. He will conversate with people. Um, but Gabe is not about that life. Gabe is not interested in hanging out with adults or being part of any kind of attention. He's just not. So Alita had encouraged him to talk to them, to try and, you know, see what their interests are, like to get to know his own children because he doesn't know them really. Um, he also told her that he wants me to be proud of him. Um, and I get mad and he shuts down. It's our, like our cycle of communication. He said that a lot of times I'm right when we fight or we talk, but he doesn't know how to talk to me because he avoids confrontation. Um, this has been ongoing in our relationship because he's always so worried about hurting my feelings. He can't be honest, so he just doesn't say anything. So, damn, that really, like, sucks so bad. <sighs> it's just a lot of realizations for me about my, my own life. Because he's not the only one in this relationship, and I know I've said that to you guys before, like, I've enabled behavior because of who I was. And I say was because I am changing and loving myself and making decisions for myself and that's changing my whole world and my relationship. Um, he said that he's still struggling with drinking. He admitted to her that he had been um, sipping, which he couldn't admit to me when I, I, I caught him drinking. Um, he said that his brain obsesses about alcohol, which is addiction, but he must not understand it clearly enough. Um, so that when his brain starts obsessing about alcohol, <clears throat> that he will drink something to make it stop obsessing, which is just, it's creating the cycle, you know, like over and over. Um, she told him that he needed support, hi Rach, and to go to groups. And I said to her, I said, I have given him all of that information. They have groups in Spanish here in town that he could go to. And she said that he wants me to go with him. And that kind of really makes me sad and angry at the same time. It, at first, it really just really pissed me off. Um, and now I'm just more sad for him that he can't do this for himself. Because I just don't think it'll stick if you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You can't do it to appease your wife because your wife is upset with you. And wants a divorce if you don't stop the drinking. You can't, that can't be your own motivator. Like that, that ha there has to be yourself. You're, you have to want it for yourself. Or you have to want it to better your life, your relationships. Uh, driving. Girl, you're always driving somewhere. I can only imagine. Um, so, I don't know. He has another appointment set up at the end of this month. So like almost two weeks, like a week and a half from now to go back to her. I actually will see her this Friday because I'm going to practice Reiki. Excited. I'm going to offer Reiki soon. Because interestingly enough, um, <laughs> my friend Shannon, I knew exactly um, which chakras for her were um, out of whack this weekend. And I, I, she lives in Indiana. I wasn't even with her. So <sighs> yeah, go with him. I, well, here's the thing. Alita has told me that in order to clear my own karma, I need to go, I not, I need to go, but I need to support him in whatever way that I can. So that if this all ends between him and I, that I know that I did everything I can. I'm also struggling with holding his hand and being like it's it's my own issue but it's like being like his mom like his parent I just want him to do it for himself and I, I it's just like such a struggle in my mind because it makes me so angry like just do it for yourself do something for yourself I don't 
This when we were when we were married the first time, I was in charge of everything and I fucking hated it. I literally hated it. I had to plan everything. I paid all the bills. I had to schedule everything. It was I had to call the fucking doctors for him. Like I did all this stuff and I hated that I was put in that position and that I took it. I mean, I was mad at everybody, I guess. And I just feel like it's all circling back around and I'm right back. We, we are right back where we were before we got divorced the first time. 100% have to want it before the change can happen. I feel show you want to go first, then have your support if he shows he truly wants the marriage to work. Yes, I agree with you, Amy. Um, Wendy said in the beginning of her dad's quitting, they all went to learn how to possibly adjust to the changes. Well, here's the other thing. So I had my own um, channeled session with somebody yesterday, um, the energetic alchemist. Her name is Crystal. I share some of her stuff into this group. And I, um, I had my own questions about my life because it was for me. And I have been feeling that he's been leaving the house a lot. And I just feel like he's going to like the gas station a lot more than he normally would or just leaving the house, going to the grocery store or whatever. Excuse me. And I swear to God that I felt like he was going and buying like the little, the little alcohol bottles and that he would drink them before he came home, like just to drink them. Because like when he was sipping the wine, I was in this house with him. I did not notice that he was sipping wine or whatever he was doing. I don't know how much he drank at any given point. I don't know when he did it. Um, but I asked her, I asked her about it, and she said that that was not rooted in reality, that there's like a, a cord between us that gets inflamed, and I search my conscious mind for things to, um, like, to give me a reason to want out of this relationship, which also was eye-opening for me, because it's, it's hard because he's not a bad guy. Oh, shit. He's not a bad guy. But I said that the first time I divorced him. He wasn't a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's a hard worker. He supports. He provides. He just fucking fails in the communication department. <laughs> and I said when I divorced him the first time, like, he's not a bad guy. He's just not for me anymore. And I just feel like I'm right back at that same spot. So she told me that <clears throat> we've been conditioned by other um, relationships or what we know relationships to be through Hollywood that in order for a marriage to end it has to be bad and it has to end because of something bad happening um, but that I just need to take my time and not rush anything um, and I just again I'm just gonna say that I don't know where we go from here because I know that I can't stay with someone who refuses or can't talk to me talk about feeling fucking lonely man damn I just like I literally don't even know what to say anymore like he can go work on himself and I only want what's best for him you know like Regardless of whether we stay together or not, I want him to love himself, you know? I want him to be better. I don't want him to keep drinking because it's toxic. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> you guys, I just... See, it's so crazy to me because... I, I sit here and I talk into this phone and I don't even, I never know how many people watch or whatever, or the ones that watch it later. And I just feel like when I sit here, even though I can't see you and there's minimal interaction, it just feels like I'm forced, I'm forced to be honest with myself. I can go through the whole week and not like, well, I did just cry a little while ago, but about a completely different topic. Um... But I can go the whole week and just ignore the lonely and ignore the impact of all of this on my life. But uh, when I get here, I just, 
I don't know. And I, I mean, it's got to be because I'm helping you guys, right? Because <sighs> I'm not alone in my thoughts. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> oh, anyways. I have said all these things before and have felt all of them. It's a very lonely, hard place to be. I agree with you. I'm going through a divorce myself right now. I'm so sorry you're hurting like this. I'm here for you no matter what choice you make. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I'm being honest with myself, I don't think this is going to work, and I've said that before. It's just hard, you know? I've done this before. Amy, I don't know what you know about me, but we've been married before. <sighs> we got divorced. Um, our divorce was final six years ago, actually. The whole thing went down the tubes in 2013. The divorce was final in early 2014. And so it was like three years we were separated and then we got back together. First year was great. But, you know, was it great or was I just overlooking things because the partnership was there? You know, I've talked to my daughter about this and he was drinking when we got back together, but I overlooked it because he was an active participant in the relationship. I don't think that I would have um, had such an issue with the drinking if he would have been a better partner. And I feel so fucking selfish. Oh my God. I know it's not. It's not selfish to want somebody to love me in the way that I need to be loved. I get that. But it's just the programming over and over. Years and years of programming is hard to get out of there. Oh, shit. Anyways. <laughs> So that healing that I had yesterday, she told me that um, I'm afraid I have a fear surrounding this, leaving this relationship because I, because <sighs> I haven't thought of what my life would look like without it. Does anyone? <laughs> I mean, for those of you who are in relationships, do you ever just like, well, oh, shit, like, what am I going to do if he dies or she dies or we get a divorce because of something or heaven forbid she have to go into a nursing home because now for my day job, some of you know what I do, but we've had a couple cases where the spouses are never going back home and they're young, like my age or just Miguel's age, 50s. They will be in a nursing home until they die, and that leaves that other spouse forced to face a new reality. So, no, I haven't really thought about what it would look like. Yeah, you'd be lost. Yeah, I know. You just don't, you don't think about that. Because why? Because we don't want to put that out into the universe. Because we're not intentionally, well, most of us, I know some people probably do, but most of us aren't intentionally seeking out a new life without our current partner. That's not how things work for most of us. Anyways. Um, what else does she tell me? That I'm going to get the position that I want. My, um, my supervisor is leaving and I'm applying for the position and I have not made it any secret. Um, there's also another position she said would interest me, so that's kind of like, I guess I need to keep my eyes open to better myself, because that is bettering myself. And at my current job, I've been there for over 20 years. Um, not that other people haven't, um, but when it comes right down to it, you have to sell yourself. I'm like thinking, when the hell was the last time I had an interview? Oh, God. Um, nine years. It's been almost nine years, I think. So I have to figure out how to do that again. Dust off the old resume because it's a technicality and I'd need one. A cover letter. Thank yous. <sighs> kind of stresses me out a little, but, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be and it'll be mine. And where we go from here, I don't know, but I got some wigs to get rid of. Who wants my wigs? Sammy Joe, by the way, I still have the pink one. I didn't mail it because I thought, oh, I'll go to Milwaukee. Didn't go to Milwaukee this weekend. Maybe next weekend. I have um, the little short blonde one. Felix. 
I just don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just going to go get them. I'll be right back. And I'm going to try not to start them on fire on my candle. Oh, shoot. I got four. <laughs> I lied. I have four. Only because I feel like I have my collection. I have my collection down good at this point. Oh, and I have one more coming. It's just... It's like a... It's something like her, just not the same color. Thank you. I'll be real and fine. Yes. Um, okay, so one of my friends, and I didn't see him on tonight, but Jeff liked this one. And I, oh God, I don't know what they, I think I like her. She's sassy and cute, but is she too cute? Like, do I look like I'm 12? Um, I don't know. And I don't, she's like super cute in the back. Like her curls stay in the back. But I just feel like I don't know if I can, it feels like it feels like a mushroom on the top or something. It just doesn't feel right on the top for me. And I think that's my problem with her. I do like that I don't have to worry about her getting into my neck and all caught up. But I don't know. She's in the I don't want pile. Sad. I've never actually worn her besides to show you guys. And I liked her when I first got her, but... And she's rooted. You know, she's cute. I just... I look at the ones that I have over there and all of them... I love her and think you just need the right place and event for her. Well... I know she's sassy, but good God. And I'm just like, once these freaking curls come out, like, that's it. It's all over. She's going to be a hot mess. I don't remember if she's heat friendly. I think she is. Anyways, so there's this one. I have the gray one. I have the pink and blackish one that I kept. I have my super long one. And then, what the hell one is that one? I don't remember what that one is. And then I have my short sandy wig and scarlet. But then I have these extra ones that I'm just like, oh, now I'm messing up my hair. Okay, so then I have, okay, so this is the other Ambrose one that I just got. I haven't worn her either besides for you guys. Not every wig is for every day. Girl, I know, because they all have their own vibe. And I have to be feeling that vibe to want to wear them. And, um... It just depends on depends on the day you know it's kind of like for anything like it depends on the day like what you wear it depends on what you feel like that day so this is strawberry shortcake and I kept I have the other one that I got with the pastel pink but this is oh strawberry shake sorry shake and I just so the other one is not this stringy but this one is still new right because I haven't worn her so the other one has, she's her, she's more of a, she's not as shiny. You can use dry shampoo, dry shampoo will get all the shine. Um, and she's, her curls are not like this. I don't think I like this one either. Just because, I mean, she's rooted too, but she's not, she's not dark. She's a more of a light color. And I know I ordered these. I ordered these. But there's a very distinct difference between looking at them on someone else or on a model head. Yeah, the one you tried on at Christmas, yes. That's the other. This is Ambrose. Um, but that one is Pastel Pink, I think is that one's called. And this one's called Strawberry Shake. Let me think. Hang on. Rose Blush. Rose Blush is the other one. This is Strawberry Shake. So the one that I ordered that's on the way is... Um, an everyday look yeah you never you do never know how they will look on you that's the thing because like you you know you look at her on a model's head not this one there's one just like it Rach um the black and pink one it's got like black roots that come down far well they're like more of like a deep mulberry but they look black ish um but she's the same she's from the same place and then I have one that I got for um, one of my first ones from the UK. 
the June Cleaver one. I don't remember. No, I don't remember her name. I'm not even going to try and say it. Genevieve was the one that was just a hot mess we had to get rid of. Um, she's got some hair coming through the cap. I'd have to fix that, but she's a... Okay, now it's in my face. Oh, for the God's sakes. I don't even know what's happening right now. Wait. I just, um, this, no. What? What? Oh. It's, it's like, there's strands everywhere for her. It's fine. And I really, this is my super soft one. This is, she's really soft. Okay, so now you don't like the long pink one, now you want the short pink one. I don't care. I didn't get rid of the short, the short, okay. Okay, there's, there's hair in the cap for this one. Um, this one, I mean, I, like I had all the bangs cut because I was gonna wear them. And I don't, there's nothing wrong with this one. She might have a snarl or two, but I haven't really, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've worn her out either. I haven't worn this one out. She's soft. She's a cheap wig. I think she was like roughly 40 bucks. Oh, but look, she's shedding. Yeah, this is why I've learned you get what you pay for as well. So she might just be a donate. I mean, they're fine. They're fine, but then look what's happening on the inside of her cap. Like down here, these are all, these are all pieces of her hair coming through the cap. <sighs> and when you um, get like the cheaper wigs, this is like the top of it. It like all feels like it comes out of one center, but when it's on, you can't freaking tell. So that's why I was like, oh, she's so freaking soft. God damn. I don't know what synthetic fibers they use for her, but she's super soft. And then this is my wig roulette one that because she's too gold, I won't grab for. I don't like gold blonde on myself at fucking all. I just, I'm not a gold blonde girl. She has permatease. Oh, the brown one's too boring? Yeah. She has permatease, and I don't understand this one at all. So permatease is what gives you volume. Like, it's this rooting... Look, you can just, like... <laughs> I don't understand why it's there, of all places. Because there's none over here. There is no root, no permatease over here. And then there's a little bit in the back, like right here. I don't understand their placement. But this one I haven't worn either. And because of this gold... Oh, God, you guys, I just don't like gold blonde on myself. I won't ever grab for her either. Unfortunately. So, I just need, and I have four more to get rid of. But then that keeps me at a seven. I would have seven once the next one comes in. Actually, I haven't even checked on that shipment. I don't know where it is right now. But I know it already shipped, so that's a good thing. So, other than that, um... Oh my God, I'm covered in hair. Okay, so the brown ones, the brown, the, the boring brown one has to go in the garbage because she's shedding a lot. I don't know why. I don't know why. So, well, I don't know why, because she's cheap. I don't really know. Um, God, what is that other black one that I have? Hang on. Oh, I forgot. She's my favorite. Well, she is one of the favorites. So I have them hanging up on those. God, I hope you can hear me because I'm like miles away from the phone. I forgot. Jaeger bomb. That's who she is. Because I have them hanging up on these things. So from over here, like where I am in the corner, it looked like I had another... It's still the light. You can see the red. But in the corner, it looked like another brown wig. And I'm like, what? I like the dark colors with your eyes. So pretty. Yes. Yeah, so my great grandma used to tell me I was full of shit because I have dark brown eyes. Ah, yes. Good times. Yeah, Jaegerbaum is a favorite for me. And I've worn her out several times now because I just love her. I love her and I love the red. 
and these ones are heat friendly. Heat friendly meaning if I wanted to straighten them I could or give them a different kind of curl. She's just, I'm just, she needs a little bit more red. Um, like I found that it's like hiding underneath the brown like in the front and I'm like well what the hell's the point of it hiding? Yeah, she was right. She was, yes, I am full of shit. Sometimes, Jen, sometimes. But, I mean, I'm a good person. <laughs> We're all good people. If you're in this group, you better be a good person. Don't let me find out otherwise. Um, I don't know for sure if my, um, if my friend Shannon is going to be posting in this group this week for Reiki or not. I'm not offering it yet. Um, but she does, her and her partner, DJ. Uh, and I told her she could post in this group if she had openings this week. So you may see a post from her coming. Yes, I know you love me. Um, you may see a post from her coming about offering Reiki sessions. Um, again, I don't know if she's going to take me up on the offer, but she's an admin for this group too because we were adminning for each other. Just kind of as a backup. Um, so she might post. <sighs> yeah, other than that, I mean... There was another thing that came up in regards to an ex because I've been dream journaling since the beginning of the year. Um, I actually bought myself just a blank journal so I could start dream journaling. I had a planner, but the planner didn't have enough space for me to do that in, so I had to buy a separate notebook. So I just jot stuff down, little things, because one of the things that I learned was that, um, well, what Crystal told me. I always have fun with my wigs. I do. See, because now she feels just like me, so I just leave her on. I forget that she's on because um, she said that I'm being helped. Um, like things are being presented to me in my dreams and, and may seem like they're going really fast. And I said, that's interesting because I feel like I'm healing, like I'm whipping through events. And I think I've said that before too. Like the, the my son dropping out of college, something that I thought didn't even bother me that presented itself in my dream so I could work through it quicker. Um, so she said I was getting help with that, but I've been able to, I've been able to feel an ex. Um, for those of you that know me, it's the, the guy that I dated when I was divorced and he's not in good health. He hasn't been for quite some time. Um, he's an alcoholic severely, severely. Um, and I don't, honestly, I don't really know what his health condition is because I have to remind myself that in this lifetime he chose to be a narcissist, which is unfortunate, but um, it just is what it is. He lies a lot. He manipulates. I know that because I dated him. I went through that whole process. I had to learn from it, yada, yada. So um, it's not the first time that I've dreamt of him where I could feel him in my dream. It, it, it was, um, God, what was it, Thursday night? Thursday night, Thursday night, I think it was. And I actually messaged him when I woke up. And I don't talk to him. First of all, I don't feel that it's appropriate. Um, and second of all, because I don't want to get sucked back into his lifestyle because he's smooth. You know, most narcissists are. They're smooth talkers. But uh, I simply asked him how he was doing because I don't, I don't know why I could feel him. I don't. I don't have an explanation for half the shit that happens in my life, to be honest, but he said, your timing is impeccable. Why do you ask? And I said, well, spirit placed you in my dream last night, and I felt compelled to ask. And he said that he had been in the hospital this past weekend, so he had told me that spirit was late, and I'm like, late how? And then he said he had been in the hospital, so they were late because the weekend had already passed. We were, you know, four days out for the weekend. And I said, you would think I was legit crazy if I messaged you every time I felt you in my dreams. And we kind of left it, you know, like, we, we, we don't talk, you know. So I had this reading with Crystal. But what happened on Friday night then was I got woken up by the dog because our old dog has been like... He wants to be in our bedroom all the time now, which is really, um, which is a really big pain in the rear end. Um, but 
but I got woken up and I could feel his energy. It was almost like I got pulled away from it as I was waking up. That's probably the best way I could say it. Uh, and I couldn't go back to sleep once the dog was in our room. And so I went out to the living room. I was on my phone. I was Because I'm awake now. This is how my life goes. And it was only like 11 o'clock. I had only been in bed for a couple hours. So then I was awake for hours. I think I finally fell back asleep at like 4.30 in the morning maybe. And as I was falling asleep, I got jolted awake because I heard him cough. This ex. And it was his cough. Everybody has their own distinct way of coughing, laughing, sighing, you know, walking. People have their own, you know, you can tell people how, like in our office, you can tell when people are coming based off their walk. And I was like, what the fuck, man? What is happening? So I asked, and um, she said that he's ascending. And that he's coming to terms with the life that he led here. And I said to her, I said, he's dying. Which, I mean, it's the only real explanation for why things are happening in the way that they are. Um, but she said we had a soul contract, which I had told John a while ago that we had. Excuse me, I'm sorry I said his name, but whatever. John Smith. Um, I had told him a while ago that we had a soul bond. Anybody um, that knows me knows that I've said that before because there's just no explanation for events that occurred, things that occurred with us and the connection that I still, that we share. He actually asked me about it. He's like, why the connection? That's so wild. And so I said it again, like we have a soul bond. I believe in soul bonds, soul contracts, whatever you want to call it, where you have traveled lifetimes with somebody and they reappear in your life as different people. Um, and I, last, a year ago now, a year ago I did, um, Oh, shoot, what does she call it? Oh, a quantum healing. And she it was like, almost kind of like past life regression, where I just went into a, a like a um, meditation with her, and I actually saw us, him and I, in a different lifetime. And it made me cry. Oh, my God, I was crying. Um, it made sense to me, though. It made a lot of sense. So... <clears throat> So, I've been putting off, oh Lord help me get through this, um, I've been putting off communication with him again because I don't feel that it's appropriate. And I always thought to myself that if I was meant to see him, it would be because he was outside and I drove past or I'd wait till the summer, um, you know, when more people are out. And I just, I listen to myself for the first fucking time in forever when it comes to touchy subjects, you know, like you have to trust yourself. Listen, I'm not looking for a relationship with this dude. I don't give a flying fuck what he does, to be honest. But I need to make sure that I'm good. So I reached out to him and I said I wanted to see him. And um, I know that'll be the last time. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that I see him in this lifetime. I don't live with regrets, and he, <laughs> that man, he tried to say that he was at peace, which I, God, I hope he is, you know, um, but that he, he's made regrets, like he has regrets about choices that he's made, and that if you don't, you're crazy or stupid or whatever, and I just chose not to engage in that conversation because I don't live with regret. I feel like everything happens for a reason, and that's my belief system. You know, I don't ever expect people to believe the things that I do. Um, that he's just, it was kind of, it was weird. It was weird. I haven't seen the man in like two and a half years. Okay, now I'm sweating. I'm sweating. She's coming off. And it was like a 10 minute conversation. 
and I'm so glad I did it. He seemed, I mean, he was drunk. <laughs> Let's just be real with who he is as a person. He was drunk, but he seemed really like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I haven't seen him in a long time or I don't know how he is when he's been drinking, but it just seemed like he was off. Um, and he's on some medications and I don't even know why. I don't, I didn't ask. I don't need to know. But I just, I trusted myself and I listened to what I needed. And I don't know why that hurts so much. Like, that shouldn't hurt. God damn it. So I'm, I guess I'm just trying to process still choosing myself. Because I would have hated myself if I had never seen him again, I guess. If I had never gotten the closure that I needed. And he's not, like, in his deathbed that I know of. I mean, he's not doing well. He's not going to recover from this. He's damaged his body beyond repair. It's just a question of when at this point. But I'm kind of like low-key proud of myself y'all like I did something for myself because I needed it not because somebody else did or because of you know whatever it just oh my god and my husband is outside and the ring camera is going off so anyways she said Crystal said that I'd be able to have beautiful conversations with him soon so I did make it a point to tell him that even if he dies, he's not rid of me because we have a soul bond. She said we both came here to learn and grow from each other. Um, but that we didn't, one of us didn't come here to love the other way, like the, to love the other the way that person needed, which is so fucking true. Um, but... I'll let that shit go, man. Oh, that's some heavy stuff, too. Working through all of it. Still choosing myself. Still figuring all this out. I'm 45 years old, and I just started choosing myself. It's never too late. It's never too late. Your life is not over at a certain age. I just posted that tonight. Like, good things can still happen to you, you know? Moments. You have, like, a whole lifetime ahead of you to make different choices. And as for me, I'll just keep dancing because I have been <laughs> I have been dancing so much for, I don't know, three days. I can't keep the music off. I just have all this extra like energy that I have to put somewhere. And it's not like I feel like I need to exercise per se, but I just can't hold it in. It's like there's too much energy to hold inside my body. Of course it hurts you said goodbye to someone you love. It was so good you listened. I agree. I'm proud of you, my friend. Thank you, Jennifer. So, choose yourself. That's my final, my final message to all of you. And even if it's hard, do it anyway. Because it's worth it. It's worth it to know that you did everything you needed to do. Or that you're focusing on your own health like I asked her about that too it's actually interesting because one of the first things she said was something about the energy and that my energy is changing and that my body is going to change too and I'm sitting there like um she don't know me from freaking Adam and I told her that um I had already lost 30 pounds. Finally, I hit the freaking 30. The scale moved. Y'all don't know how fucking excited I was. I was yelling in the bathroom when I got on the scale. <laughs> oh, my God. It just felt like for a while that it was... I'm so sorry. That keeps going off. It felt for a while that I was stuck. And then what happened was you get stuck and then you get mentally stuck. 
and it's like self-sabotage inside your head. And it's not that I wasn't eating what I should be eating. It's just that I really do think a lot of everything we do comes from what we think about it. So she told me that, excuse me, I need to focus on not so much on what kind of food I'm eating, but more on the energy that that food provides. So actually, um, today I actually put Reiki on my food for the first time ever. So, and I learned really quickly yesterday I tried to eat something and it almost made me like sick when I was looking at it and I was eating it on what it was doing to me. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, my whole world is crazy. I deal with so much energy stuff and spirit world stuff. It just, it is what it is. It's who I am. I'm unique in my own crazy way. Take it or leave it, y'all, because that's who I am. Anyways. I love you. And until next time, choose yourself and make good choices. Choosing yourself is a great choice. I'm proof. Okay, I love you guys. Bye.